I bought two untested Xbox 360 consoles from Goodwill, and in this video, we're gonna take an in-depth look at both of them, open them up, test them out, hopefully we get a Blades or NXC dashboard console, and if they have any issues, we're gonna fix them up. All right, so it was quite a while ago that I bought these consoles from Goodwill back in 2022. All right, so we can see here on the packing slip, a lot of two Xbox 360 console, $14.99 plus shipping. I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks. We have one slim, one fat, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and see what's inside of here. We got these packaged up very well. You can see there's a ton of bubble wrap here. Let's go ahead and tear that bubble wrap off and see what's inside. <laughs> this Xbox has a Zoomies, a Zoomies sticker on it. <laughs> That's not a good sign. All right, so we'll start with the slim here, and this thing doesn't look too bad. It's pretty scratched up. It is the matte black console, and hey, yeah, it's not too bad. Let's go ahead and see what kind of hard drive is in here. If there is a hard drive, let's hope so. There's not, crap. That does kind of suck because if this console doesn't work, the hard drive would have, you know, increased the value of this thing, obviously. Now looking at the back, this thing was manufactured in 2012, and it's got a warranty sticker intact. I mean, this console looks pretty good. I'd be surprised if it doesn't work. If there is an issue, I would imagine it's probably an issue with the uh, disk drive. Um, usually the slims don't get red ring of death, but you never know. All right, so next up we have the Fat360, and this one concerns me a bit because it has a Zoomy sticker on it. That's just kind of self-explanatory there. Oh, we got a giant crack here on the faceplate. Piece just fell off. Now flipping around to the back, oh, that's not a good sign. We got open marks all over this thing. Dang, and it was manufactured in 2009, so like this should be a Jasper right here, which is a good thing. Like Jaspers don't usually red ring of death, don't usually get the red ring of death, but we'll, we'll of course find out here in a second. Let's take a look at the sides here. Yeah, I mean, the the plates on the side are not broken or anything, but I do hear, I hear something like, there's a broken piece inside of there. Um, might just be the faceplate. Let's go ahead and take the faceplate all the way off. All right, faceplate off, and yeah, it looks like this console has had some work done because we have the original sticker here, which is torn off. We also have a third party sticker from somebody that was also torn off. So this console was repaired once and then somebody came back and I guess tried to repair it again. And I also just noticed we have some probably Coke spillage there because it's like a brown liquid that's like dried up there. I also saw some here on the side. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it looks like probably Coke was spilled into here. Oh yeah, and here's that uh, nice broken faceplate. Uh, <laughs> it keeps falling apart even more. Um, now the good thing is the faceplate is not you know critical. You can buy a new one for pretty cheap, but let's go ahead and plug these in and see if they work. So let's start by testing the slim console first, then we'll do the fat console. And I have my nice, uh, a ghetto power adapter here that you plug into the slim. You can see it plugs into the fat power adapter and then into your console. Good stuff, it, it, it works, but yeah, it works. I'll put it that way. All right, so slim console turning on. We have a green light. And the uh, disk, drive, disk drive works, so let's go ahead and connect up my controller here. Now this controller is my own controller, or one I just have laying around. It's not the one that came with it because it didn't come with one, it just came with the consoles. And hey, we are booted up on the Metro dashboard, and the disk tray, as you saw, it shoots out. It has some a little bit of debris there, but not, not too bad. And let's go ahead and see what kind of memory we have here. So we go down to storage. We should have four gigs by default. Okay, and it looks like there's no data here. So somebody either wiped their data, or this console was just like, not used or probably what happened is they probably had all of their data on the external drive or not external but the one they had plugged into the console and they probably removed it and oh that's not a good <laughs> that's not a good sign all right so oh man initial setup is grayed out so we probably have fam what is it parental controls here oh no oh no no crap dude <laughs> so parental controls on the 360 are kind of a pain in the butt because if you don't guess the passcode or the password, you're basically toast because I've tried to reset everything on a 360 control or console before and it just does not work properly. But I, 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 uh, I was able to guess it. I just did down four times in a row and there it was like the simplest passcode ever. Got, got lucky. And that's, that's not the first time it's happened. There was another probably two or three times when I've had family controls or parental controls, whatever you call it. And, uh, it was like, why, 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 or LB, 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 something stupid like that, but man, we got lucky there. So next we'll test out a game, but first I have a kind of funny story on a Parental Controls 360 that we had a few months ago. And so yeah, I had Parental Controls enabled, and if you don't guess the passcode, you have to guess the password. And along with the password is like a security question, like, yeah, it's like, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite food? Whatever. And this one had, uh, what's your favorite food? And both Danny and I's immediate thoughts were pizza because like if you ask a hundred people what their favorite food is, like the chances are, you know, like 75 people are gonna say pizza. So we guessed pizza with a capital P, that was incorrect. We guessed pizza with a lowercase p and it was correct. Like how wild is it to guess the correct food on the, the, the parental controls thing? Uh, just pretty crazy, but uh, funny story there. Now let's go ahead and put this game in, see if it works real quick. That maybe that's the issue here is it doesn't read games. I don't know. I mean, it was an untested console, so it might just work perfectly fine. All right, yeah, so this console's 
working no problem. We're supplying some Modern Warfare 2. All right, so now we're back up to the main menu and we're gonna turn this console off and then we'll test out the FAT360. Hey guys, by the way, I'm on my way to Texas right now to pick up an absolutely massive 900 pound lot of video game consoles from Goodwill. And by the way, they're, they're all untested. No idea what they're gonna give to me. Uh, Red Ring of Death consoles maybe, uh, Yellow Light of Death PS3s, Wii Fit boards. I don't know, hopefully a lot of the stuff works because I paid a whole lot of money here, but we're going to be documenting the entire journey from North Carolina to Texas next week. So make sure to tune in every day next week, Monday through Friday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Again, every single day leading up to the final video on Friday when we go through the entire massive 900 pound Goodwill lot and see what they gave to us. All right, so onto the Zoomies 360, three, two, one. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that noise, that was ridiculous. But uh, we are unfortunately on the latest Metro dashboard, that kind of sucks. And do we have parental controls on? We don't, nice. And of course we're not gonna have any storage because, oh wait, oh this is a Jasper. Yes, a Jasper does have some memory built in. So we do have avatar editor, we got some system items. Wait, do we have anybody logged in here? No profiles. Oh, come on, man. Games, nothing, there's just nothing. What, who uses console? My guess is that somebody Use this console, it was repaired, and then I guess repaired again, and the repair shop probably wiped it clean. But like, you can, <laughs> you can't see it here. Let me take a video. But like, this console is constantly blinking because the tray is trying to open. Let me just try to eject it again in the software. Oh my goodness. I've heard a lot of weird noises from 360s, but that is the worst noise I've ever heard. It is, uh, I don't know what's going on in there. I guess I can try to take the plate off and see if it does anything differently. It sounds like the rubber band. It's not a rubber band, but like the, it sounds like the band that, um, you know, takes the motors and pushes the disc drive open. It's just missing. Like, that's what it sounds like to me. But we'll, we'll check. And I don't even know if it's, like, is it hooked up? Like, the, uh, the eject button doesn't work at all. We can't do much of this console. It clearly turns on, it works, but the disc drive is jacked up. So we're gonna turn this console off and we're gonna open it up and see what the problem is on the inside. All right, so let's go ahead and open this console up and it, <laughs> the first piece came off really easily because it's broken there. Nice. And we just got little pieces falling out everywhere, which is a great sign. Next piece is off as well. And this piece is broken in multiple spots. That's cool to see as well. Now the, uh, <laughs> the back part is what concerns me because it's clearly been open before, like multiple times you've got like these holes are mutilated, which shouldn't happen if you use the proper tools. I just went to uh, pry apart the front piece and one of the clips just fell straight off. That's cool. Hopefully the next one does not do the same thing, but it honestly feels like it might. Got this piece off with only one casualty this time. And yeah, we got those like dust and heat marks. And I'm already getting a whiff of the, uh, the smells from this console, which is not a surprise considering I had a Zoomy sticker on it. I'll just let you infer there what's, what, what smell I'm, I'm smelling. And uh, let's go ahead and take the uh, top piece off now and see what the inside of this thing looks like. All right, top piece off. And the inside is not terrible. The dust, the, the heat sink is a bit dusty, but nothing too crazy. But what we're curious about here is a disk drive. And the disk drive is hooked up. Um, we do see two wires going to it and two wires going to the board. Let's go ahead and unplug it here. And we're gonna take the uh, disk drive apart and see if we can <laughs> find out what's going on on the inside of this thing. Oh, <laughs> we have a free disk. Grease, what a random thing to have inside of your 360. The Rock and Rydell edition, awesome. It's free, can't complain, that's cool. And let's take a look at this thing. The disc, uh, the top looks okay. I mean, oh, there it is. Hold on, how did I miss that? Our band is just, how did that happen? The band is just laying on top, snapped in half, and that thing is brittle. Like I can just pull it and it'll probably snap again. Maybe not, um, but it looks like my theory is true. I'm guessing that that band is just completely gone. <laughs> Dude, I just flipped it over to the bottom we have some tape just holding the ribbon cable in place. Why? Why? Like the ribbon cable looks like it's plugged into the connector just fine, but it's got this tape on top of it just holding it down. And I don't understand why, but uh, I'm just gonna leave that as is for now. We're gonna eject this thing and take a look at the, the band in there and see if, um, confirm that's a problem. And just in case you're wondering how to do it, let me show you how to manually eject the uh, disk drive here. So we got this little tiny black bar right here, which if you take a screwdriver, push it in, it'll start to activate the mechanism and then boom, slides out. And as we can see here, the suspicions are confirmed. There is no band right there. So there should be a rubber band. This one right here should be stretching across like, like that right there. Luckily I do have some replacements that I can throw in there, um, but we can definitely see what the problem is now. Uh, so let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit and then we'll replace the band and it should work. So let me just start by showing you how the disk drive works and why the rubber band is critical. So first of all, this is the front of the disk drive. It ejects like so, if it's working properly. And you can see here on the inside, we have a bunch of gears. And basically to work, you need this rubber band to stretch around this piece 
kind of like around like so, like I showed you earlier, and I'll show you how to put it on later. But what happens is you press the eject button, uh, this little piece right here spins, and then because of that rubber band, it causes this piece to spin, which then makes it eject. But since that rubber band is missing, this piece spins by itself and this piece never spins at all. So what we need to do is replace this broken rubber band with a new one that works like, you know, the ones I have in this baggie right here. But let's start by cleaning off the little gears right here with some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. So what I do is just kind of stick it in that groove right there and get it cleaned up because there probably is some dust in there. And if it's too dusty, it'll slip and it still won't open. Um, even if the even if the rubber band is there, so we can just clean it up. All right, so now what you do is take a rubber band and some tweezers. You put the rubber band around the small piece first, and you take your tweezers and kind of stretch it around the fat piece, like so. And you can see now that is intact. And if we spin this piece right here, or if we just push the disk drive in, you can see everything is spinning. And so it should work without a problem now. Now there is some more stuff to clean up here on the disk drive. You can see there's a bunch of like dust and grime around the uh, circular part there. But we're gonna do that later. I'm just gonna put this back together first and see if it works. So I'll put it partially back together, basically just plug the disk drive back in. Uh, let's go ahead and see if it works now. I'm gonna press the power button here. And hey, it's not making the crazy screeching noise now. Let's go ahead and press the disk drive eject button. There it goes. It's like it's, it's coming out pretty slow, but it does come out. We probably, like I said, we need to do some more cleanup in there and it should eject better. But hey man, like it's it's opening and making normal noises now. That's a great sign. Let's go ahead and see if this, uh, <laughs> this grease movie they had in there works. Okay, I don't think I've ever seen this notification pop up where it says secure HDCP link not found. Oh wait, no, I have it plugged into my Elgato, so it's not gonna work. Uh, that makes sense, okay, that makes sense. All right, let's eject this DVD. Let's try to put a game in, let's see if that works. And I mean, here we are guys, we are booted up into Call of Duty. We're playing with no problems. So it was simple as that. Literally all we had to do was open the console up, open the disk drive up, swap out the rubber band, clean it up a little bit, and we're, we're good to go. Man, that's the, that's the kind of repair I love. Like the one that's not the rubber ring of death, so much easier. Because rubber ring of death, there's like, there's not much you can do to come back with that from that unless you're gonna replace the GPU or something along those lines. But man, replacing the rubber band, that's uh, easy peasy and it's gonna last you for years. <laughs> All right guys, so I came down here to system info to uh, check out the dashboard number and I came across the console name, which is Bob. Like, and that's funny because that's honestly something I would have done like in back in middle school. Cause like, you know, you just name everything Bob. Cause like, why not? But that's funny. The dashboard is on pretty recent though. We'll probably have to update it. We got two working consoles. like. Amazing, 40 bucks for a Jasper and a Slim. That's a really solid deal, like not gonna lie. That's, a, that's this is worth like 100 plus for these two consoles. So we know this console works now, but since we have the console already opened up, we might as well go down to the thermal paste, kind of see what it looks like and then replace it, uh, make this thing last a bit longer. So we'll start by taking the disk drive out. And I'm actually curious if the thermal paste has been replaced before because I mean, you guys saw this thing's been opened up a couple times. So I don't know if they've gone that far or if it was just a, just a disk drive issue both times, but let's just go ahead and keep going and see what we find. And here's the fan. Not terrible, but it is very dusty. All right, motherboard coming out. Bottom looks pretty good. Got our X clamps, so it has not had any kind of uh, replacement there. All right, I actually went ahead and got both X clamps off. And I think the uh, big heat sink is coming off a little bit easier. And I love how these, uh, the new 360 here, oh man, yeah, that definitely has not been replaced. But like I was saying, I love how the new 360 has such a beefier heat sink. I mean, it makes sense since they're trying to prevent rattling of death. But you can see our chip there is just basically bald. No thermal paste like at all and the thermal paste here is just squeezed out the side. Now, this one right here is kind of stuck to the chip. I'm gonna be careful here peeling it off so we don't mess anything up, but let's see if we can get it off now. All right, finally getting this heat sink off the GPU. What I had to do is plug the console in and let it heat up for a, you know, 30 seconds or so so that the thermal paste would come off and what in the world? It almost looks yellow right there. I'll try to show a picture on the screen, but like, I don't, it's clearly still the OEM like dried up thermal paste, but it just looks a little bit different than I'm used to. But like, I don't know, I've opened up tons of these things and never seen any yellow gunk in the thermal paste here. So a little bit odd to see, uh, but we'll go ahead and get this thing cleaned up, get the whole console cleaned up, thermal paste replaced, and then we'll come back. I have the CPU and GPU cleaned up now. You can see they're all nice and shiny. Got the heat sinks cleaned up as well. Uh, basically I used some 99% rice propyl alcohol and a bunch of Q-tips and cleaned them off. And it takes a while, but eventually it comes off. Now, what we need to do next is replace our thermal compound. So we have some MX4 right here. And yeah, you can see on each one, I use about the size of a P. Of course, we'll put the heat sink back on like so. All right, finally got these X clamps back on. Uh, in case you've never done this, it is a pain in the butt to put the X clamps back on. It's already hard enough to take them off, but putting them back on is a nightmare. So let's go ahead and put these back. Um, I already cleaned up most of this stuff. We're gonna make sure it's all cleaned up and ready to go. And then we're gonna put it back in this case, test it out and hopefully it still works. And like, as you can see, the fan looks nice and clean now. We'll snap that back in. I already blew off the whole board and blew off the heat sinks, uh, cleaned out the inside of the disk drive. Uh, so let's go ahead and put all those things back together. We got it partially back together. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Three, two, one. Spinning up, turning on, that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and see if it boots up. And so there we are guys, it is booted up. Let's go ahead and open the tray up and see if it 
opens a little bit quicker this time. All right, so I'm testing out the tray and it seems to be opening fine, but it is still a little bit slow when it opens. I'll just let you watch right here. Like as you can see, it comes out a little bit slow, but uh, nothing really to write home about. So yeah, we're basically gonna call this a non-issue since everything else is working fine and a slow disk drive doesn't really mean anything. Um, it will be listed on my website down below. We also have this 360 Slim that I'm gonna list on the website. I'm honestly not even gonna bother opening it up. We're gonna clean the outside and kind of try to blow it out and sew and stuff, but we're not gonna fully refurbish it like we did for this one. But uh, check those out down below if you want to. And uh, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.